welcome to A Bet Face Theatre presents Five Questions With, and today's guest, Jonathan Bank. Jonathan has been the artistic director of the Mint Theatre Company in New York City since 1995, where he has focused on unearthing and producing lost and neglected plays, many of which he has also directed. Some of the Mint's acclaimed productions include four plays by the neglected Irish playwright, Teresa Deeby, plays by novelists such as A.A. A. Milne, D.H. Lawrence, and Ernest Hemingway, and reviving significant female writers such as Githa Sowerby and Rachel Crothers. Uh, Jonathan's also edited uh, five volumes of the reclaimed published play series. The Mint has been recognized with uh, awards such as an uh, OB Grant, uh, a Special Drama Desk Award, and the Theatre History Museum's Theatre Preservation Award. Jonathan, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. So let's dig right in. Uh, the first question is what play or experience first got you into theater? Well, you know, it, I, I, it's a much more interesting story, right? If, if you see something that yeah. and you say, oh, I want to be part of that. But um, does anybody have that story? I mean, that where they're have, you know, are describing this great revel, you know, <laughs> revelatory of night in the theater. You know, for me, it, it's, yeah. Um, there was a girl, you know, in high school. <laughs> right? And so um, she was the lead in the musical. And so I was, you know, the assistant prop master or whatever. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's how I remember it, something like that, you know, that I, I got involved backstage. And, um, and, <clears throat> I, I was, I, I think, you know, what happened for me, I mean, this I remember really specifically is that I remember um, hearing the director give notes. Hmm. And I'm, you know, I'm not on stage, I'm not trying to act, I'm not, you know, I'm, uh, I, I'm just, I mean, I'm involved and I'm, you know, seeing the run through or whatever, or the rehearsal. Hmm. Um, but I was just so taken by the specificity of his um, observations of you know what was happening and how to make it better. Mm. And there's some, there was something about that that um, that really you know kind of lit a spark for me. Mm. And and I think right from that moment, um, I mean. I don't mean, you know, that the, the, the course was set from that moment, <laughs> but, but what I mean is that actually I was engaged. Um, I, by a director, by directing, mm -hmm. you know, and then the next thing you do is you start acting because who's, you know, what else are you going to do? But, I, but I, um, <clears throat> but I think it was, it was, it was always about directing for me, and I and even though I spent a number of years um, learning to act, I mean, I got a master's degree, and I, mm. I um, but I was really just kind of counting the days until I could quit acting, and, and <laughs> um, so. Uh, but but I but you know what drew me into the theater in the first place was social. You know, it was just yeah. chasing the girl. <laughs> it's a great, nice. excellent reason, John, <laughs> for joining any any sort of uh, theater experience. Mm. Um, so, okay, so Justin, this now you have worked on a lot of terrific plays. You've uncovered and rediscovered a lot of amazing plays. Mm. So, this is, I'm really interested to hear your answer to this question, which mm -hmm. is, what's a great play that you love, and why? Mm. Well, you know, it's always the one I'm working on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, and, 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 you know, when I look back over the list of what I have worked on, you know, great is a very high bar. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I think, it, it, you know, it's probably boring for me to talk about a play that I love that nobody has ever read or seen. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so maybe that's what I'm going to do anyway, but yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but a play that isn't, you know, from the Mint uh, production history um, mm -hmm. that people might know, 
mm. that I think is that I love mm. is Pericles, mm. Shakespeare's Pericles, mm. which um, in some ways, you know, really was, uh, uh, you know, a, played a big role in my kind of uh, my in the development of the mission of the Mint Theater. Mm. But um, I, I was, uh, but before the Mint existed and before my involvement, um, I was offered an opportunity to direct by a Shakespeare company. And, and you know, they offered me Pericles or something else. Mm. And I don't remember what the something else was, but I knew that um, the idea of doing an unfamiliar Shakespeare was more appealing to me, you know, and it kind of taught me right in that moment that, um, or taught me, it revealed to me that, you know, that, that my interest was that I didn't want an audience um, kind of assessing how I handled problems that they had or challenges that they had seen handled by, mm -hmm. you know, a dozen other times mm -hmm. um, that I wanted them, I wanted to just tell them a story. Mm -hmm. And Pericles is a fantastic story. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's got the, you know, a real epic arc, a fairy tale epic arc. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, uh, a gorgeous reunion ending that, you know, just brings tears mm -hmm. to my heart, every, you know, every time. And, um, um, and, I, and, I, and I think, you know, I also, what I love about it is that it's under, you know, it's undervalued. Um, yeah. yeah. And, um, and it's, you know, it's interesting in the sense of, you know, I dug pretty deep into it the first time I worked on it. And, um, and you know, scholars, there's, you know, there's this tendency to, well, Shakespeare, you know, he wrote these good lines here, but all the lines, but those other lines that are kind of clunky, he didn't write those. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, but, and I, you know, whether he wrote it or whether he collaborated on it or what, you know, it is to me is all besides the point. It takes the audience on a fantastic journey mm -hmm. and um, and leaves them someplace, you know, filled with joy and love and heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. that's a great, yeah, that's a, that's a great reason for a great play. <laughs> <laughs> So, Jonathan, can you tell us about a time in your theater life where things turned out differently than you expected them to? Yeah, you know, I, I, I reject the whole premise of the question. <laughs> <laughs> um, because, well, first of all, I mean, you know, on, on multiple levels, I reject the premise um, <clears throat> in the sense that um, because I'm a difficult person. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, theater life and life aren't different, you know, and I, I, I can say that maybe more so than some other people you talk to because, um, because I have a full-time job mm -hmm. and I've had it, you know, for decades. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I don't have, um, I have hours when I'm not uh, you know, when I'm making bread and not making theater, you know, um, but, but that, that distinction, uh, anyway, you know, I, 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 I question the, 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 the distinction for myself, but what I really question is, is that if you're in my position, if you're a producer of plays, if you're running an off-Broadway theater in New York City, you have no business having expectations of, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think probably somebody, you know, from the outside could, uh, you know, say, well, there's 10 times here where, mm -hmm. and I, you know, they don't come to mind because you, because what you expect is to learn as you go, 
mm. to, you know, to um, figure, you know, you don't have a plan. Mm. So the idea of something going differently than you planned and that being noteworthy mm. is, is um, not really how I live my life. So, I mean, how my professional life, you know, yeah. works. Um, I mean, there are, you know, when I, if I think about it, I mean, there are stories of, you know, the time that an actor gave me notice, you know, uh, the night of the, you know, final dress rehearsal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's just a, a but I do, I mean, there are bumps in the road and, yeah. you know, and um, um, I, I maybe a more interesting story because I actually really learned something from, um, we did a play that was really our first kind of uh, noteworthy success yeah. um, 22 years ago. Uh, um, we did the Voise Inheritance by mm -hmm. Harley Grenfell Barker, and um, and uh, when we were installing the set, um, the designer and I, uh, Vicki Davis, is somebody I've you know worked with for the last you know twenty five years, um, and I was not the director of the production, but. Um, but there was a, a major element of the set that we cut at loading. Oh. Said, oh, you know what? That all of that stuff that we that you were planning, it's better without it. Uh. And um, and you know what that opened the door for me to to. Uh, you know, it maybe it helps me to have this idea of not planning. Yeah. Is be, you know, in the sense that I now love to cut things that, <laughs> that I pay for. You know that um, because it tells me that I'm um, that my head is on straight and I'm thinking right about the play, so that I don't care that we invested, you know, sixteen hundred dollars in having that custom made. It's not right. It doesn't help us tell the story. Yeah. I'm, I, you know, and I'm, and I always, I'm kind of delighted to have, to discover that that plan wasn't good, mm -hmm. and to know that I'm, you know, in the moment of making the right, you, you know, making the right decisions about how to tell the story. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah. great. Okay, Jonathan. So you mentioned uh, being in this full time job for. It's a couple of decades in, in the theater. So, so what is it that keeps you coming back to the theater? What moves you, what excites you about theater? Well, you know, I haven't left. So there's no, <laughs> see, I, see, I'm not going off to make a movie the way some of your actor, uh, uh, it's the way you may be. Um, <laughs> um, but, uh, um, and, and it's funny, I, um, Maybe it's not funny, but uh, during the the, the um, I don't know what the shelf life of this interview is going to be, <laughs> but but you know during the the our, the pandemic years, um, we have I, I have been making archival recordings of our productions for ten years or so and I had you know I have a rich library of of high quality three camera uh, HD captures of, of all these productions and we've streamed a number of them uh, over the over the last year eight of them in fact and um, and I you know there's been a lot of really enthusiastic feedback from audience who you know and they've Oh, thank God, a, a, a play. Uh, um, uh, and I, you know, I'm thrilled that they're e eager to watch our work, but I'm like, what's wrong with television? What, you're kidding me. Why, <laughs> why would you want to 
you know, why would you want to watch a play when you, you know, that wasn't made for the screen when you could watch? And, um, and I don't know what their answer really is. You know, there's something about a, um, well, plays are different, but that's not, but that's not the theater, that's plays. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what makes the theater really special is that the event is in real time. You know, mm -hmm. that, it, that, that, um, that there's no uh, pause, there's no hitting. I mean, you know, you can't hit pause. You can't mm -hmm. stop, you can't. Now, I mean, the audience that was watching the streaming loved the fact that they could say, let's watch that scene again because <laughs> yes. I missed something. And you know, and I feel like I'm sure you did miss something. Mm -hmm. And thank you for watching it again, that's great. But, um, um, you know, I remember being told a story and I don't, I have any idea whether it's actually true or not, um, but that um, Yale Doctorow wrote a play um, produced on Broadway, I, I think I'm, no, it was the public in 1978, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And um, and I don't, the guy who told this story, I don't know if, if he was, quoting from an interview or if he asked the question himself, but it was, you know, why would you want to make a play when you have this, you know, great successful career as a novelist where you don't have to collaborate with anybody? You know, you, you, you decide everything. And um, his answer, uh, according to this story, was that that the thing that he had no control over was when somebody put the book down, hmm. when they, you know, whether they stopped in the middle of a chapter, whether they, hmm. you, you know, whether they stopped in the middle of a sentence in order to have a hot dog, you know, what that, that, so that the, the real time ex event, hmm. um, and, and, and knowing that you have a, a you know, a literally a, an audience that is captive that, and that you have to, you have to command their attention and then you ride on the, on the wave of their attention mm -hmm. um, as an actor you do. I mean, I, <clears throat> I mean, but as a director, that's what I'm, um, I mean, I, I, as a director, I'm an audience member providing that attention. Hmm. And uh, so it's, it's the concentration of attention maybe that, that makes the theater um, better than anything else. Hmm. Mm. Nice. Yeah. So you talked, uh, you know, you talked a little bit about the fact that there is a real separation for you between you know, theater life and life, you know, there's a, the, the, there you, isn't a real, oh, there isn't. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so, so then this question might, uh, <laughs> might yeah. be the same in the same category. Um, because, uh, you know, can you, is, is there a skill maybe though that you've developed through, through theater that you have found useful when you're not working in theater? I, and there's a lot of skills that I've developed in life that I find useful in the theater. Um, so I'm rejecting the premise again <laughs> and, and, and swapping it. Um, um, and maybe that's because the most important, you know, the, the, if I, if the chief feature of, of, Theater is that is this concentration of attention. This you mm -hmm. know that um, that doesn't exist in life. You know, there. I mean, um, we can um, interrupt the flow of a story. You know, and our whoever we're talking to, you know, will let us back in. It, um, so I don't. I don't. I I don't feel that. I, that I know what a useful theater skill is mm -hmm. other than storytelling. Mm -hmm. And um, and I guess the problem for me is that I 
apply my storytelling skills to the rest of my life, but the rest of my life is largely, you know, producing mm -hmm. the plays. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it may, I mean, I may not be directing them and I'm certainly not acting in them and I'm not designing them, you know, but, but I, you know, I learned early, early, early on in my um, producing career um, to think about a budget as a story mm. and a grant proposal as a story and mm. a flyer, a promotional flyer as a story. And I mean, I literally, uh, you know, 25 years ago, I remember thinking about um, what the exposition of the flyer would be, you know, what, what's the hook? What am I putting on the outside of the envelope that gets somebody to open the flyer? And then what's the exposition? And then where's the climax? And, you know, and, and, mm. and how do I make sure that I'm using what I understand about how to, mm. how to hook an audience? Yeah in the design of the way the piece folds or, you know, whatever it is. So, um, so that's not life, you know, but, um, but, <clears throat> um, and, you know, in a way, I mean, life doesn't, I mean, maybe this is the big difference between life and theater is that, it, you know, good theater, the narrative is intentional. Hmm. Um, and that doesn't apply to good life, you know. <laughs> well said. <laughs> Jonathan, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks very yeah, much. Yeah, absolutely. And a huge thank you to you, our audience, for joining us. If you enjoyed the interview, please like below and uh, follow About Face and share because we believe theater makes life better. See you next time on About Face Theater presents Five Questions With. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and share. Thanks for watching.